Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabbi ajmain. My dear brother Muslims in the whole world. I with with with, with uh, in all humility I would like to say that I have a deep message for all the Muslims in the world and that is most of them most likely do not know who they are who they are is determined by people not as what Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala al khaliq the creator created them so most of them are under living their lives because they are so much influenced by what society think of them by what by how society view them and regard them not by how Allah created them so uh, i feel that uh, the message is that muslims and people of other regions as well in the world must carry out a mental revolution from what society thinks of them to what Allah thinks of them and that's why i have uh, decided to make a motivational video entitled a comprehensive mental revolution by all the muslims in the world to achieve success in the world and the hereafter not just for the present generation but for all future generations of mankind now it may be possible for some of my audience to think that this is highly ambitious and that nobody has ever done this before i said please be patient listen to the lecture until the end it is just like the english proverb says that the proof of the pudding is in the eating so my lecture is just like the pudding that i have made that i shall be making uh, whether it is made from corn or or, or eggs you must taste it first before you give your comment i hold firmly to the belief that it is not who is speaking but what is he speaking and also one hadith rasulullah sallam that is allah does not look at your face allah does not look at your position in life but allah looks at your heart and your action so to me it it also means that allah does not look at your face does not look at your position in life does not look at your qualifications does not look how many degrees you have but allah looks at your heart and your actions which means that Allah does not look at your face does not look at your qualification your degrees and what degrees you have but Allah looks at your heart and your actions as far as I'm concerned I'm also influenced I also follow uh, God's uh, dictum in surah az-zariyat verse 55 was auz billah subhanahu wa zakkir fa inna zikra tanfa al mu'minin breathe reminder remind people and indeed reminding people will help those who are believers it is not that the believers do not know they know but just to remind them and uh, my action is to hit the heart of the individuals 
who those who view this uh, video i hope they will feel here that this lecture can really benefit them ladies and gentlemen and fellow ummah the starting point of my lecture is uh, surah al baqarah verse uh, 30 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he wanted to make human beings as uh, as a vice chairman his representatives on the earth and it was uh, opposed by the uh, malaika the angels say why do you want to create human beings who will destroy the environment who will shed blood we are always obedient to you and we are created from fire human beings are created from uh, from earth so allah says qala inni a'lamu ma la ta'lam we meaning allah we know what you don't know so the angels look only at the negative part of human beings but allah knows that human beings can also be positive can also be brilliant can also be uh, imaginative imaginative people and uh, people with vision people with passion people with uh, initiative and drive and can turn uh, deserts into cities and big airports for example like in uh, some muslim countries in dubai and uae in malaysia uh, human beings turn a rubber estate prang besar estate into uh, the federal capital of malaysia beautiful with a man made lake so we are capable of doing many many good things of course in addition to being very uh, uh, what do you call we we destroy the environment global warming and so on and so forth this for human beings as Uh, as God's representative on the earth, in the face of the earth. Now, for Muslims, Allah has very, very high expectation indeed. This is contained in Ali Imran, Surah Ali Imran, verse uh, 110. I was going to tell you. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrija lin nasi ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhauna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah you the followers of Muhammad ah uh, the can be the best of people khaira umma ukhrija lin nas to lead to bring good to the masses the people in the world and to tell people what to do and to tell them what not to do to stop them from doing evil things and you believe in Allah so Allah Subhanahu taala says that once our iman our belief our faith is 100% is absolute we are capable of being khaira umma we are capable of leading the people of the world we are capable of telling people what they should do what they shouldn't do but is the reality the same as what Allah expects I think far from it so I'm going to prove to you that all the Muslims in the world have the capacity have the innate capability to become khaira ummah to lead the masses if our iman our belief is solid is 100% uh, pure ladies and gentlemen in order for muslims to do what allah has created and also human beings allah must have equipped us with the means to become what Allah meant us to be in verse 18 
In, in uh, Surah Atin verse 4 Allah says Auzubillah astagfirullah Laqad halaqnal insana fi ahsan taqwim We did not create human beings other than the best of creation the best of creation now uh, where is our the qualities that we have that Allah says we are the best not our hands not our legs not our eyes not our ears but it is in our brain this determines that we are the best of creations Ladies and gentlemen, I have a book called The Three Pound Universe. It says here, you can hold it in the palm of your hand, but a computer with the same number of bits will be a hundred stories tall and cover the state of Texas. Now, Texas is the second biggest state in America after Alaska. The area is 692,000 square kilometers. Peninsula Malaysia, Malaysia minus uh, Sabah, Sarawak. Or England, uh, Great Britain minus um, Ireland, uh, Wales and Scotland. We are born as the same. It's 131,000 square kilometers. If you divide 692,000 by 131,000, the same thing dividing 68 by 13, you have 5.3. 5.3 times uh, what called 5.3 times uh, um, England or uh, uh, Peninsula Malaysia. 100 stories tall, that's the size of computer men must make in order to compete with this computer given by Allah SWT free which weighs 3 kilos or, or uh, 3 pounds or 1.4 kilos. Now, why is it so fantastic? There's, there's another book that I have which is uh, by Empire, the title is Empires of the Mind by Dennis Whitley. D E N I S Whitley W A I T L E Y. On page 12, there is a paragraph here that says, According to UCLA, University of California at Los Angeles, Brain Research Institute, the human brain's potential to create, store, and learn may be virtually unlimited. Quotes, open quotes, throughout our lives, we use only a fraction of our thinking ability, close quote, concluded a prominent Russian scholar named Ivan Yevremov. We could Without any difficulty, whatever, learn 40 languages, memorize a set of encyclopedias from A to Z, and complete the required courses of dozens of colleges. Now, that is a fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, uh, size of the brain. And uh, why so? There are 100 billion neurons or cells in the brain and each neuron is capable of connecting with other neurons and the connection is fantastic some scientists say there are more connections in the brain than there are deserts on the shores of the world and on the deserts of the world now 100 billion neurons and We've got the left side, the left brain, the right brain. Left brain is more for logical thinking, systematic thinking, sequential thinking. Right brain is more for creative thinking, visualization, imagination, and intuitive thinking. And uh, the ability to foresee, to, 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 to think of the future, the ability to go to the future and come back, 
and the ability to solve problems, the ability to see opportunities, and so on, so and so on, so forth. Now, Einstein once said that the intuitive mind is a gift of God, whereas the rational mind is a servant of mankind. We have come to adore, to appreciate, to 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 value so much the rational mind left side but we ignore the intuitive mind in other words god has created us to be able to reach out to him and ask for 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 us uh, ask, ask for ideas ask for visions how to solve our problems so uh people have discovered that in our busy life today, we are at the uh, beta level, the brain. If we can slow down our brain to the uh, alpha level, which is uh, beta level is from uh, 14 to 21, and alpha level is from 7 to 21 cycles per second. We take a deep breath 10 times and then slow down, and a deep, deep breath 10 times around. And then you ask God how you can solve your present problems. If you have to shed tears, you shed tears. The best time to do it is at night. And uh, then you go to sleep. And while you are sleeping, the brain is working. The brain is reaching out to God. This man this servant of yours is asking for this, 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 this solution to the problem. And next morning, or maybe next month, next week, or whatever, next month, all of a sudden, your visions come to you. How you can solve the problems. This is never being taught. Now, the school system, in most schools in the country, in the world, they teach you facts. They teach you road learning because that is easy to calculate and you cannot use the the computer you cannot use the handphone now the, the calculator is there and then all the facts that you are supposed to memorize and remember and bomb in the exam are all available at the fingertips today so why do you want to get our school children to memorize facts and then when they can't remember the facts then they get a D or C or F or whatever and then they cannot use the calculator to calculate when in daily life we can use the calculator we have all the facts and the textbooks and all that so what we need is creative problem solving abilities and, and uh, also the ability to see uh, to see opportunities in the environment and to figure out how to take advantage of the opportunities in the environment that is never being stressed. Now, uh, I say that the Muslim scholars 1,000 years ago or more than that, they were able to master so many subjects. They were able to master so many languages, translating uh, books from the Greek to, to, to Arabic and to various languages. And we were excellent uh, scholars. And uh, the, for example, Ibn Sina's books, the canon, is a book on... Uh, medicine was used by the West for 500 years I have a list here of the Muslim scholars in the past Jabir Ibn Hayyan Al-Kindi Al-Khwarizmi Al-Fargami Fargani Al-Razi Ibn Sina Ibn Yunus Al-Kashi Al-Ibn Khaldun they were all great scholars what happened to the scholars in the Muslim world today? And 
they lived 1000 years ago without the computer without the handphone without the knowledge available at their fingertips today we the muslims should be greater if not uh, as good as they they were before so what happened today i think we have lost we have not been brief about how fantastic the human brain is so if the human brain is so fantastic why is that we are not brief we are not uh, why not great today I say that it's because of our past. We were never being briefed by our parents, never being briefed by the teachers, kindergarten teachers, second elementary school teachers, second teachers. We were never being be briefed by the, 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 the uh, uh, what they call professors in the yeah. I take an example. I have a friend by the name of Rahim Abdul Rahim Ben Ismail that I've known. For the last 68 years, my my classmate, and uh, he represents all Muslim men and women in the world today. Now, Rahim comes from a poor family. His father, let's say, is uh, just a taxi driver. His mother, just an ordinary housewife. The father had to start work. At after soon after secondary education, because of poverty, because his father and parents died, and he was brought up by his uh, uh, grandparents. And when his grand grandparents died, he had to work. And also same thing with his mother. So uh, they came to center of Kuala Lumpur. It can be any center, any any city in the world. And. Uh, He was a taxi driver, and the wife worked as a maid in several people's houses. Rahim, being alone, the mother would prepare some breakfast. He would take some food to go to school, and he is more or less on his own. If his school results are not very good, let's say he's got only one A and a few Bs and few Cs, he believes wholeheartedly. 100% that that result of his O level is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. The parents also believe the same thing. And they never question that. Could it be something, could it be that uh, I have other talents? No. That is the absolute evaluation of his mental or intellectual capability so then he gets a club he gets a job as a club and becomes a club there's rank rank number one uh, what you call uh, uh, majority of uh, majority of people in, in in the country in the world uh, minimum se secondary education now this is rahim number two very unfortunate his mother died when he was three months old then the father remarried a widow with two children and then at the age of three the father died then the stepmother married a widower with two children and then when he was four years old the stepfather died so the stepmother panicked and sent rahim to live in her Uh, relatives houses to work so Rahim from the age of six seven eight nine ten had to work to look after chicken to look after goats to look after to, uh, to, to, to look after cows to earn his upkeep sometimes he would go to school sometimes he would not go to school and if he went to school he was given the second hand uh, school uniforms and being laughed at by the uh, the girls so rahim becomes a laughing stock and rahim does not get any laugh from all the stepfathers stepmothers foster fathers foster mothers that he brought up in and nobody gave him any any encouragement so it will not be a surprise that today rahim at best is only a grab rider sending food to people 
Now that is rhyme number two. Rhyme number three. Father taxi driver, uh, one day when he was driving, he saw an accident right in front of him. And uh, he had to stop. And he saw that, uh, you know, the, 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 there was a black smoke coming up. The driver had to swerve to the left immediately because uh, one motorcyclist did uh, ride, uh, re, re, what you call, uh, by uh, drip, uh, one motor car driven by a young fellow suddenly swerved to, to, to the road and went away. So he had to avoid an accident, he swerved to the left and there was that accident. So uh, Ismail being very tall and strong saw that the wife on the left side on the, on the passenger seat was trying to get out of the car but couldn't because, because of the accident. So he, he kicked the door open, left door, let the wife come out and then removed the seatbelt of the husband who was driving and then carried him over his shoulders like a fireman and said, run, run, run. Then there was a boom and the fire, the car caught fire. Now, had Ismail Rahim's father not been there, Definitely, the couple would have been, uh, what call, would have been died. So they rushed into the taxi and went to the nearest hospital. So happened that there was a hospital that was close by, and then uh, went to the emergency section. After a long time, the doctors came out. Madam, we cannot save your husband because she has got a very, very, very. Uh, uh, odd, uh, very rare, very rare blood group called Bombay blood group. What? Do you say Bombay blood group? I've got Bombay blood group. He took out a card from his wallet and showed, Oh, yes, you've got Bombay blood group. Uh, can you give a donation? Oh, I don't mind. You can take one pint, two pints. So, with that blood from him, the uh, man was able to survive. Now, one month later, the couple came to their house because uh, Ryan's father left the address and thanked him profusely. You saved my life, the husband said. And uh, for two reasons. One, you pull out from us from the fire Number two, your blood helped me because the doctor says it's very rare blood and they did not have any stock and to wait for another hospital to send the Bombay blood group, it will take about three or four hours. But then I would have died. Oh, you are staying here? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. You come and stay with us. You got a big house, five room house. You pay all your debts and come and see right because they were renting a small room and uh, Rahim was then in the womb of the, uh, the, the mother the, the husband was uh, uh, his name is Dr. Ahmad and uh, his wife Dr. Mariam both of them took Rahim's mother to the hospital to check whether he's got enough uh, called uh, iron content, iron metal in his body or not. And uh, by the time he was born, she was, uh, she gave birth to a normal gene. And one day, both Dr. Ahmad and Dr. Mariam were staying with their parents and they were the only child. The parents, one, uh, the grandfather was a uh, retired headmaster and the mother also a retired teacher. And uh, when Rahim was born, he had so much of love and affection given by his parents, his fought, adopted father and mother, and adopted um, grandmother and grandfather. It will not be a surprise at all to anybody that he does well in his studies. It will not be a surprise to anybody that he goes to university and get a good degree. So there are three Rahims. One Rahim, 
first rahim just a clock second rahim uh, 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 or grab rider third rahim a university graduate all three are say, let's say 25 years old now what is my message my message is let's say rhyme number one and number two are able to see this video of mine they must conclude that hey, wait a minute there must be a lot of potentialities in me there must more must much more capability in me which have not come out it's up to me now to bring out so the psychologists say that all they have to do is to remember phd p for passion s for hunger and d for determination passion hunger determination forget about their school results examination results set it aside now they go inside and then what is my passion what do i do in my life i'm 25 years old maybe i can live up to the age of the speaker who is 85 that's another 60 years i must have the ability they search and search and each one let's say the rhyme number one decided to study information technology part-time and rhyme number two decided to become a cook the first uh, uh, work in a hotel and then later on he becomes a cook in a ship and he would like to travel around the world and be a in a save money and then become uh, get married so do we are all different compared uh, we are we can all be different if we are being told early on in our life that we have got so much capabilities if we are told that if our luck is very good we become fantastic if our luck is not good we become boastful so there's nothing wrong with us so ladies and gentlemen that is to seek to, to get uh, success in this world now what about the, the to set success in, in, in the uh, in, in after life I have a, 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 a list here 49 times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Ya ayyuhu al-lazina amanu amdu soliha and the end is uh, Jannah, sugar. 49 times. All we Muslims have to do is to Ya ayyuh lazina amanu Iman must be there and do good deeds and Allah promise the heaven. Now, we talk about uh, Iman first. I have a uh, picture here. My three children, I did not create them. The world knows what I did, what I and my wife did. Now they are all big, they are in their twenties now, and uh, five of them have gone to universities. That's number one. Number two, I want, you, in other words, all we have to do, look at the pictures of our children. How did we get the children? There must be somebody who helped us. That's number one. Number two, once I was in Edinburgh, Scotland, I visited a museum at Edinburgh uh, Science Centre. And there was a section about the creation of the universe, how the universe started about the billions of galaxies and stars and all that the sentence that is stuck in my mind and to think that it all started from something that's not bigger than the size of the dot at the end of the sentence imagine something the size of a dot that exploded 13.7 billion years ago giving rise to these galaxies and uh, in 2004 my son was working as an engineer in Tulsa in Oklahoma we coordinated our holidays 
and my wife and I, we, we flew there and then we took a leave. We traveled around Oklahoma, uh, at Texas and went to North Arizona and we visited Flagstaff, a town where there was this Lowell Observatory. The scientists explained to us that all these pictures were taken by the Hubble uh, telescope and it, it was a work called not one uh, picture but many many pictures which is a composite picture and it was the size of the wall all the galaxies were there and the stars were there Hard, countless galaxies how is that with the Big Bang something the size of dot can give rise to these billions of galaxies and each galaxy is billions of stars there is a, a point for us to remember. There must be a creator. Stephen Hawking, Professor Stephen Hawking said that this is uh, the uh, what called Big Bang. And uh, he calls it the singular, a, a point of singularity. How can something the size of a dot explode it? And then it must be within split second, the whole world universe dis must disperse. According to Stephen Hawking, it must be uh, with a second divided by 1,000 million million parts. Just meaning one second divided to 1,000 million million parts is 0 0.0000017 zeros. One zero is missing, then the whole thing will come back. With absorbed back by force, sheer force of its, uh, of its uh, gravity. Within a split second, the universe was proved billions and trillions of miles. How? Who? That's number one. And it is in the Quran, which is, which is Surah Al Anbiya, verse 30, uh, whereby uh, God Allah SWT says that we. Uh, the 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 the, the, uh, the 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 world and the sky was one, and we split it, and that becomes uh, whatever it, it, it we see today, and also uh, Azariah forty seven, we created the heavens and we caused it to expand, and the scientists have are describing that the world is expanding. Now, the world is uh, what we call, uh, we have got our, uh, what, ozone layer. At the top of the North Pole, there is the ozone layer. Who put the ozone layer there? If there is no ozone layer, then we will die of radiation. And if the world was bigger than what it is today, we will the the the, the, the Earth will be able to uh, to attract methane and uh, ammonia. We will all die. If the world was if the Earth was smaller than what it is today, then uh, it cannot attract the water vapor. So. Uh, the whole creation is so fantastic, so meticulous, so definite that, you know, it is cause for us to, to remember there must be a creator. So that's Iman, Amar Saleh. Every week Muslims are reminded in Taqwa, when, when they go to the mosque, must Taqwa to Allah. Do what is being told and don't do what is forbidden. Why is that we don't follow that? We don't follow that is because we are selfish. We don't think our Iman is not strong enough to deter us from doing what is wrong. We know. So to me, the biggest gap in the world is the gap between knowing and doing. We all know, all Muslims know, 
what they should do, what they should not do. But they still do because the Iman is not 100%. Now, one day we will all die. And once we die, then we are given a briefing how fantastic the human being is and how God has created us to be fantastic and uh, the fact that we can become uh, fantastic uh, Muslims in the world. Definitely, uh, we will be regretting for not doing what we are supposed to do. I say that there must be millions of Muslims who are now in Barza. We must believe in Barza because there is part of Iman and Day of Judgment. There must be millions of Muslims in Barza who say, why didn't anybody tell me when I was in the world that my brain is fantastic, that I could study anything I wanted to? Why did I do the things that I did not do, uh, the, the things that I did or didn't do what I should have done? They must be full of regret now. Surah Ashura, verse 44, which says that uh, if you, there, there are people there who say, please send me back to the, to the world. I want to do good deeds. Is there no way I can go back to the world? Surah As-Sajdah, verse 12. O oh Allah, I have, we have seen and we have heard. Please send me back to the earth, to the world, because we are now convinced. In other words, when they die, when they, die they are in, in Barza, and they have seen the sufferings of people who committed sins, then only they realize. Why can't they realize now? Ladies and gentlemen, if those people who want to come back, God says, yes, you can come back as Haira Ummah, the best of human beings. We are, you can be given 10 yellow cards. Each time you do something that's wrong that you should not do, you get a dream and there's number one with flesh. And you do it nine times, the red card, red card with flesh. Definitely, I think that those people in Barza will agree. Never mind. 10 yellow cards, all right, I will be the best people. I will be the Haira Ummah, the best people to do what I, I should do and not do what I shouldn't do. Now, I say here that all the Muslims in the world have that capability. Now, from the age of 8 or 80, Eight. For example, he gets involved in, uh, he, 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 he swims the river and he is drowned. Or people cross the road and they, they get hit by the car, they, they die. Or people drive the car and they get sleepy and they make an accident and they die. Or people get heart attack at the age of 40 or whatever, and then they die. Once they are there, then the angels say, Oh, God had planned you to live up the age of 85. And then they will be able to see all the suffering of the people there, and uh, the, the, all the, the creations of the universe and all that. Then I think, if they ask, can I go back? Yes, you can go back, provided you agree to 10 yellow cards. And if you get it, you, you will be given a red card. I say that they will agree. Why is that? We can agree to be good human beings, to be a high rock ummah, only when we are there. 
why can't we imagine every night that we are there? So there are three places we can imagine ourselves. We can have the uh, mental revolution every night for one month or two months. Every night, what one? You sit before you go to sleep. You switch off the light, and then uh, you can say your prayers. I or see whatever, and then imagine yourself. Now I am in prison. There are three places you can imagine. I am in prison because I have been charged for uh, anti-corruption, for bribery. I definitely I will regret because I have been sentenced to, to, to sentence for 10 years imprisonment. Number two, imagine yourself in the hospital. You are suffering from high blood pressure, suffering from diabetes, suffering from heart disease. You know that you are going to die. So you come back to the present and avoid having the diabetes, high blood pressure and uh, heart problems. So we can do that. One, imagine ourselves in, in prison and then come back to the present without be, uh, committing any, any, any crimes. Go to the hospital and come back to the present reducing our weight, reducing our high blood pressure, reducing our diabetes. And the third is imagine ourselves in Barza. Now I am in Barza, I really regret for doing the things that I did. Then you realize that you must not do all the things that you do. So every night we can do that. We can have a, ment a, re a mental revolution, thinking of these three places, definitely we can uh, become better human beings. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my motivational stick. Every Muslim in this world today, men or women, those who can think, those who are not having dementia or Alzheimer's, have these three choices. One, in spite of viewing my video and understanding the essence of my video, he still wants to remain this part. This is the present self. Don't want to change. This is all nonsense. I don't want to change. I want to do what I have been doing. I want to eat uh, whatever I like, high fat, high cholesterol, drink all the, all the fizzy drinks and uh, sometimes I pray, sometimes I don't pray and if there are opportunities for me to make money, I will make money. Yes, you can remain as you are. Two, you go down. This is a big part here. Become a worse individual, a worse Muslim. You drink, you gamble, you take bribes and then you eat high fat food uh, high high cholesterol food, and you never uh, you never you never go for me uh, medical checkups, and uh, you 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 smoke, and you take drugs. One day you definitely will die. Definitely, we all will die, and we will go to Abaza. We definitely will regret. Maybe we will die early. Now, if we know what to do when we are here to continue to drink and. Would, uh, this is our worst self, why not we be the best that we can be and this is the way. It is so much difficult to be your best self, the best version of yourself, the best Muslim that you can be, not the best Muslim in the world, but the best human being, the best Muslim, the best worker that you can be, to follow the, the, the akhlaq of, uh, of Rasulullah number one, Siddiq, honesty, number two is uh, Amanah, 
Number three is tablet. You spread the word. And number four, fatana. That's all. Yeah, your iman is absolute. Your good is unreal. You become the best worker. Not the best worker in the world, but the best worker that you can be. And that's all Allah expects us. Because as I said down, 49 times Allah mentions in the Quran, Ya ayyuh lazina amanu wa amil salihah. Wahai those who believe and uh, those who do good deeds, Allah promised Jannah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best way that I can put it. And uh, if one chance in a million I touch your life, you have the confidence now that you can be a better human being, a better Muslim, a better husband, a better student, a better worker, a better leader, then I feel that I have done my best to reach out to as many Muslims as possible. If, you, if I touch your life, please donate to one institution that I'm involved in, which is IPEC, Institute Pengajar Al-Quran, Institute to Teach Quran. I'm, I'm the chairman of the um, uh, management committee and uh, we are trying to teach Quran, how to read Quran in a faster way for 30 hours. We need funds. We are an NGO. We need the funding. And maybe you can help. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best way I can do my bit to help the Ummah. Because it is possible for all Muslims to change if they remember this. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.